everyone, I'm Miriam and welcome to beautiful rural France. Another gardening video because spring is here and I have a lot of uh, uh, plants need uh, coming outside the polytunnel. They are ready to be outside. I'm going to take you inside the polytunnel as well and show you because it's nearly empty. I'm excited because everything is outside and I've done a lot of uh, uh, planting. The weather is saying it's going to rain and I think it's amazing for the plants and I hope I want the rain because the plants love it as well. We've made another strip, a round strip, a cutie one, and we're gonna be uh, planting there the gourmet pumpkin courgette one. And I had two pots and one I've thinned them and put them in like different pots. They're doing amazing. I'm gonna show you inside. But the other pot, I want to try to like plant it all together and experiment and see what it does. And then so we made like a nice cute round circle and planted the full pot with nice compost around it. I can't wait to see it because honestly I don't know exactly what it is and this is about 30 plants in here so we're gonna try it see if it does well and from there we decide if it doesn't then next time I will thin them and you know separate the plants and, uh, and stuff but we're gonna try it and see hopefully we'll do really really nicely and I can feel feel it it's gonna do really really well so yeah Super excited about this uh, strip. <laughs> we have the wheel on now because we get a lot of flies coming in and aphids and all that and we don't want that in here. So as you can see, we have plenty of things gone outside. Hero of uh, Tuscany kale has gone outside. Nearly all the broccoli is gone. We only left with these teeny tiny ones. And I don't know with these ones. So, They've been here at the same time as the other ones I've, uh, I've took outside. So I think in the end I will put them outside, straight in the land and see what they do. Experiment with them as well. Some kills as well, they're tiny too. And we're going to do the same thing. I think in the, in the end we're going to put them outside and straight on the ground. And this is the other pot with all the gourmets. And they doing amazing. So we've separated every plant. Some of them have two, two plants in it, but you can do the best anyway. So sometimes you can't separate them and you don't want to be damaging the roots. So if they are two together, I normally leave them. Here I'm putting out my pumpkin, squash and courgettes because the weather is just, as you can see, it's amazing. And I need to say something about the marrow courgettes and squash plants. These plants are quite... I'm cropping the leaves on the bottom because I'm going to put them very firm and in. So those two leaves, they're going to get rotten and to stop damaging the rest of the plant. So I put them off and anyway, they're going to grow very, very big. So the thing about this plant, especially if you live in very dumpy place or very wet place, these plants can get like a mildew. It's like a white powdery on the leaves, but don't worry. They are not harm at all for the plants. And you just make sure when you water your plants, water them straight on the ground instead of on top of the leaves because then you stop damaging the plant and the leaves from burning.
The way we're doing it by making this big massive hole and then putting our nice awesome compost first and then the rest of the soil on top. The reason we're doing it like that is because plants, most of the plants, they have a, a root uh, about 30 centimeters long. So the deeper I make the hole and the more I fill the hole with nice compost, we have our compost is just excellent. The more I fill it with nice, awesome compost, the more our plant will benefit from it and our plant will come healthy and nice and awesome and just amazing. That's why I do it like this. These uh, pumpkins, uh, they are not that deep uh, plant. They don't have very deep uh, roots. They are quite shallow roots anyway. And these ones, if you look inside on the stems, on the stalks, they are quite, you can see the red and you can see the yellow on some of them. It's just amazing. I can't wait to try this beetroot. I'm going to put them in this uh, spot next to the dill because the dill is quite a very frisky, gets tall and like, and like frisky like this. So having them around it, it's gonna be amazing because beetroot is quite lower. Definitely, I would never recommend to use pots like this when you're growing uh, plants from seeds and stuff like that because these pots are porcy pots so any water you put in dries them so quickly and especially if you have them in the polytunnel it gets very warm in there so you need to constantly give them water to bring this plant outside this pot is quite a bit difficult because having the plastic pots you have more flexibility to like squeeze them a bit from the bottom and they come easily and you don't hurt the plants. And uh, another thing with the uh, beetroot is the same as uh, kale and broccoli. They love to grow together. So if you put them all together, like very next to each other, they will love it anyway. So don't worry about that. They love the support of uh, between them, between the, the plants. They love it. That's why I'm putting them very like next to each other because they do really, really well. Okay, so I have this one. The plant sticks and I don't want to damage the roots. That's why I don't really love this pot. They are very no good pot at all. Here we go. Come on, we're bringing you out. Come on, come on. Here we go. I know, so far. Really bad pot. And the, the good thing about beetroot is you can eat the leaves and you can eat the fruit, the beetroot. Well, as I said, because I have plenty of uh, beetroots from last year, uh, I'm going to keep those ones to eat the leaves. And then these ones, because they are so special and they are colorful beetroots, I can't wait to taste them. I'm going to crop all the leaves uh, with time, and then I will be eating the beetroot. So I can't wait for this. I'm so excited because I've never had this uh, species of beetroots, and I'm excited the broccolis and kales we've just uh, planted outside and as I said here is where we had the two years old kales and broccolis and uh, we've left a couple of teeny tiny on the start of this trip um, in the spot for now because they don't really want
So I'm bringing my plants inside again, and then I can do them in here. Here we are. Oops, bring all the pots in here. So as I said, all my uh, tomatoes, I have beef, pear and cherry, and they all need cleaning. Plenty of them. I don't think I will be doing it all today because they are quite plenty, but I need to start some sometime. <laughs> so and this, uh, this is the best time really. So I can start thinning the plants and uh, I'm going to do my okra first. I left the uh, the pear tomatoes and some of the okras that I've just thinned outside because it's raining. Best water is rain for the plants. It's just amazing for them. So I'm gonna start thinning them and putting them in bigger pots, a bigger size pot. A top tip that I really recommend when you report your plants, try to do it when the soil is dry. So for example, I'm doing my reporting today. I haven't watered them yet because it's just so much easy to take them out of the pot and all the soil is just compacted and together. So it's easier if you're gonna start, for example, me, for example, I'm gonna start thinning them easier to take them and it's so easy to separate them than when it's wet because everything gets mushy and all the soil comes off it's just very difficult so i recommend that when you do it do it with when the soil is dry so on the day you're gonna do it don't water them yet until you transplant them and then you water them on the new pot so much easier and obviously here I have quite plenty of uh, plants. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna try to separate them in like one plant in each pot, but sometimes it's quite difficult to, you know, to keep one plant. So if you need to like take two and put them in a pot, do it. You know, what we don't want is to damage the plant anyway. So I'm gonna do my best to separate them and then my best to do one plant on each pot. But if you can't, don't worry, put the two plants or, or if they're teeny tiny, if uh, you have like a bigger plant and a teeny tiny plant, leave it. Leave the teeny tiny plant with the bigger plant. It just depends on how the plant is looking like. And if uh, you think that two plants should be together in that pot, put them together one okra plant and try as always press them in and turn them in
thank you so much for watching i hope you liked this video if you liked it thumbs up share it with friends and family and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon because that will help massively this channel to grow an awesome community together so thank you so much for watching have an awesome awesome day take care and see you soon